Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be solving a capital budgeting cash flow estimation problem. Now make sure you stick around till the end because this question is not as straightforward as just finding the net present value. So in the question it says you are a recycler of spent plutonium rods from nuclear reactors and a new government mandate requires you to purchase a filtration system for your wastewater. You can choose between two machines. Machine one has a four year life and costs $1.2 million. It has an annual pre-tax operating cost of 100,000 in the first year. Operating costs are expected to increase at a rate of 5% per year over the life of the machine. Machine number two has a six year life, costs seven. 120,000 has an annual pre-tax operating cost of 80,000 in the first year. The operating costs are expected to increase at a rate of 8% per year over the life of the machines. You do not foresee any further changes in environmental laws or changes in water filtration technology. Both machines have zero salvage values. Both machines will be fully depreciated over the useful life using the straight line approach. The corporate tax rate is 34% and the appropriate discount rate is 12%. Great. Now, in order for you to decide which machine should be chosen, we need to start by finding the net present value of each one. So let's begin with machine number one. You're told that the machine is going to cost $1.2 million and then cost 100,000 in the first year and then 5% more each year. So in the first year, the operating cost is 100,000 before tax. So if we multiply that by one minus the tax rate, we would get an operating cost after tax of 66,000. So it's actually costing $66,000 after taxes to run this machine in the first year. Then it says it's going to increase at a rate of 5% over the life of the machine. So this is now a growing annuity. So I'm going to use the present value of a growing annuity. So I'll take that first payment of 66,000 divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate of 5%. Multiply that by one minus one plus the growth rate divided by one plus the discount rate to the power of four. So I get a present value of 214,522 and 44. Next it says that the machine will be fully depreciated over the four year useful life and has no salvage value. So for the CCA, the depreciation, I'm going to take the 1.2 million and just divide it by the four year useful life, which is 300,000 per year. And then to find the tax shield, the tax shield is the amount of tax we save each year because of the depreciation. You simply have to take that depreciation and multiply it by the tax rate. So 300,000 multiplied by 34% is 102,000. So each year, we are going to save $102,000. So now I would need to find the present value of that number. Since this is an ordinary annuity, we can use the ordinary annuity formula, or we can use a financial calculator. The present value is 66,000 multiplied by one minus one plus the discount rate to the power of negative four over the discount rate. So I'm using the formula for the present value of an ordinary annuity. And that is $309,810. So the net present value is 309,810. We consider this to be an inflow. So tax shields or tax savings are considered inflows of cash. The rest in this case is an outflow because the 214,000 is the present value of the operating costs so our cost is an outflow. So we'll subtract 214,522.44 cents. And we're also going to subtract the $1.2 million that we spent to purchase the machine. So the net present value here is negative 1,104,712.44 cents. Now for machine number two, we're going to repeat the exact same process. First, we'll start by finding the after-tax operating cost, so we'll take the $80,000, multiply that by one minus the tax rate. So that is 52,800. And since this is growing at a rate of 8%, we're also going to use a growing annuity formula. So the present value would be 52,800 divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate, which is now 8%. power six, because this one has a six year life. 
So we get a present value of $258,772.90. Now for the depreciation. Once again, we'll take the entire cost of the asset, which is $720,000, and divide it by the six-year useful life. So we get $120,000 per year in depreciation before tax. So our tax shield would be 120000 multiplied by 34%, the tax rate, which is 40800 And now we'll use, once again, the ordinary annuity formula to find the present value. So the present value would be 40800 one plus the discount rate. One hundred and sixty seven thousand seven hundred forty five and forty cents. All right, so now the NPV for machine number two would be the one hundred and sixty seven thousand seven hundred forty five dollars and forty cents that we received in tax savings minus the two hundred and fifty eight thousand seven seventy two and ninety cents. For the operating cost, minus 720000 for the purchase price of the machine. So a net present value of $811,027.50. Now you may think that the question is over, but it's actually not. It's important to remember that when you're evaluating investments that have different time horizons, that you need to use the equivalent annual NPV and not just the NPV. So yes, 811000 is better than a million, right? Because this these are outflows. So I would rather have spent 800,000 than have spent 1.1 million. However, until we've converted them to annual amounts so that we can compare them over the same unit of time, we can't know for sure which one is better. So the next thing to do would be to go back to each one and calculate the equivalent annual net present value, which is simply done by taking your net present value and converting it to an annuity. So I'm going to set my negative 1,104,712.44 as my present value. And I'm going to solve for the payment in an ordinary annuity. So I'm using the ordinary annuity formula with my net present value set as my present value, and I'm gonna solve for the payment. And you should get here a payment of about 363,709.40. So this means that this machine is costing us $363,709 per year. If we repeat that now with the second machine, so I'll take the net present value and I'm going to solve for the payment. This time I get a net present value of negative 197, 260, Confirming that machine two is actually better because it has a higher equivalent annual net present value. Negative 197 is greater than negative 363. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Now make sure you watch this other video where we solved another practice question on capital budget.